Ah, greetings. I am Braggy and I am a Viking. Now today it is one of those random historical talks. I'm going to talk about this sword and why I like it but why I don't fundamentally like this scabbard. So first of all let me put my old shield down on the wall, on the floor, not the wall, and I'll try to manoeuvre my langsats and put the sword back in the scabbard. Now you'll see first of all this scabbard is very long. Oh, I mean, I mean like, my arm nearly outstretches it, it's, it's that long and, um, and as you can see with comparison to the sword as a mare it up to each other you'll see there's quite a bit of distance. Now one thing what I could do actually is I could saw this off, pull the lever back and make it shorter to suit the sword but this scabbard's not been designed for this sword so I don't really want to do that. Eventually Somewhere, somewhere along the line I will probably buy a sword which will suit it right and if I change it and if that happens I won't know and I won't be able to mare it up with another sword so that's the first thing I don't like about this, the old scabbard now the end piece the old chain I do love that's very nice I hope you can get to see that on camera now come in a little bit no idea who designed that if it's a druid probably one of the mainstream ones you can get and I'll probably say it's, it's been bonded on with glue often that's how they would put these on some days you can rivet these on but it's slightly difficult and you've got to do it at the beginning of the process of making sure you've got a rivet there when you're sewing up the old sheath or scabbard and if that rivet pops back in then you can have a bit of difficulty so that's why most of these bottom shapes will be glued on I've got one or two to glue on myself. Now I get a nice bit of leather. I do like the leather itself. And because it's on a scabbard it does give room and play for being able to paint it or, em or embossed with the design in the future. And that would work. You do have to soften the leather up with hot water to get that to work properly. So you could put uh, a, a bit of hot towel on here to kind of get it to soften up. But then again you could also affect the glue holding the leather so that may not work. It's something you have to just practice on the back and just have a look. Now the sword itself, it's quite a nice sword. Anybody know who made this? If not, I'll tell you in a, in a few minutes. Or in a few seconds, depending on how long it will take me to talk about this. So, again, it's been used, it's a second hand blade, so it's had lots of action on the battlefield, I'd say, from all the little nicks and all the marks on the pommel. And again, all the marks on the hat leather handle. So, and I bought this off eBay. I think some of you will remember at the time it was on for sale. I'm just, I was disappointed in the, in the length, was not a, in, in, in the sense of it wasn't as long as a scabbard, but because it's an armor class, I'm quite happy with the blade. And it's a good buy because it was still a lot cheaper than buying a brand new one. And the most important thing like about any sword, let me grab my old shield, so I'm not going, I'll keep the sword there for it. Hang on a minute, I'm coming back. So the most important thing is that it feels right in your hand. You know, when you swing it about, when you bang it against your shield, when you start trying to attack the enemy. But it also has to feel right with a good armour glove on your hand. Because you do not want to go into battle with a bare fist. Trust me, because it, you will get whacked by a sword or an axe. And you, do, you do not want broken fingers, which is the worst case scenario. You know, most of the time it will just be grazes and it will hurt. Trust me, it will hurt. But uh, you, you'll get tougher hands. But if you wear a good pair of armoured gloves, you know, even some of these suede guarding gloves you can get pure suede all the way along and not this modern fancy material you'll see, uh, then that's a good option as well. And most good Viking retailers and settlers, sutlers, not settlers, sutlers, sutlers, uh, you could uh, sell them, you know, traders. So, oh yeah, so, again, that's got a good weight to it. You know, this will be a very good sword, actually, for a beginner, because it's not too heavy and it's not too long. And this is probably represents more of the earlier period of Viking swords, because they were shorter and gradually got longer, until you get to the medieval age, when you get two-handed swords, and some of them are just magnificent and I'd love to own one to demonstrate one so yes and again if you're in the old Viking battle don't have your shield out like here 
don't have it out like this make you keep yourself open have it tight to, you know into your chest trying to cover your shoulder if you can but even just below the shoulder is good but somebody will whack your shoulder with a spear or a sword so the ability to have it above the shoulder is better but of course the downside is then your upper leg here where they can hit you above your knee so you've always got to constantly watch what's happening around you to shift your shield to counteract that shit you know that spear or counteract that dude over there just trying to whack your shoulder with a sword and then i like to keep my you know my arm in to my body you know you'll get a good muscles doing this it's good exercise i mean it's like going to the gym just become a viking man oh yes become a viking and don't go to the gym it's probably cheaper and you'll end up with a lot of viking kit and uh, of course this is often a, I, like, I, I like i don't know what i do I have my shield up here some days in, in the video but it just it feels comfy and i guess you know you could if you haven't got an old um you know strap on your shield to put it over your back then this is just a different option for when you're walking than having it down here all the time but then i suppose what would happen is you'd probably just change hands and just carry it in this arm for a little bit as well and have your sword away on the march so what I don't like about this sheath, because I've not really mentioned it yet, I have put my shield down again for the second time. It's a length. Now let me just walk away and demonstrate. So there you are, you're walking along, and your sword is so long it gets trapped in your leg and you're going to trip over and fall over. It's that long. And, it, and although I could probably shorten it on this old strap and have it not dangling so, you know, so down so much, it's, it's still... You know, in my opinion, too, it's very long, and so when you're walking about with a sword like this, you've got to carry it in your hand. And again, as I put my shield up for the second time, if you're using the shield in this arm, and you're having to hold this in your hand, simply because it's, you've got a risk of falling over and tripping, which you do not want. You do not want to fall over in this stuff. You've got to do this, you've got to hold it in your hand. Extra weight. So... It pays not to have your sword hanging so low. This sword is actually not for me. This is Eggle's sword I bought for him just to use on camera. And so the Baldrick is designed for his body and not mine, which is wider because, you know, Eggle's a dude. Look at this. A few things about the sword. Because if you do have a sword, make sure you've got a good bit of sheepskin lining the old scabbard, which this has. And the reason why you have sheepskin is so that when it goes in, it's got nicely oiled sheepskin inside the sheath and it will keep your blade oiled. If you don't have that and you know your sword's left in there for a few years, it could go rusty. So make sure it's well oiled. Make sure it's free from burrs and sharp edges. Any good Viking reenactment society should have good training officers who go around and do a weapons check. You know, before the battle. And if there's two or three battles, it should be done every time, in my opinion. And they go along there, I'll point the fingers and I make sure, yeah, that's okay, there's no sharp burrs, I can't cut myself. And again, they'll go along the pommel and they'll check, you know. Yeah, you know, it's a bit sharp there and they'll say, file that down, so you get a file out or they give you a file. And they'll make sure, because you can so easily cut somebody with a little sharp edge. So, yes. Now, on this sword I have a peace tie. Now, I don't know if I'm a fan of the old peace tie, because the thing about having a peace tie, it does limit your sword to that kind of a Wessex era. So, I just tend to look at it, whether there being a peace tie, and just being a way to tie your sword up on the march. Uh, in my opinion, rather than having it as directly as a peace tie. And the, the idea of this, it, it does work. You know, you, you, you form a, a little knot and and you tie it off and then that won't come out when you're walking along because what will happen your sword will flip and if you're not careful or you're not concentrating it falls on the ground and Eric you know 10 men behind you picks it up and it's now his sword so you know I'm not a fan of the peace tie but I am a fan of tying your sword off and having a mechanism to do so and I think while I'm here I'll just go through a couple of the weapons I'm carrying you can see here because it would be very rude not to I have two sorts of lang sacks. Yes. This is a, a Norwegian style because of the handle. One of my favourite ones. 
slightly bent actually. It's always had a slight bend on it. It's been used a hell of a lot. And then we have what I call a Bretta Langsax, a more of a broad Langsax. And this used to be Niel's first one. And you can compare the two up, you'll see that that one's much wider. And again, would a Viking ever go and fight with two Langsaxes? Well, if you could afford it, yes, but I think it's impractical not to have one Langsax and a shield myself. As I put them away, they're both in sheaths rather than being in scabbards. I think most Langsaxes, in, in my understanding or whatever I've seen of Langsaxes, most of the time they're always in sheaths and I've not often seen a Langsax in a scabbard. Yes. And before you I go, the scabbard is solid and has a solid base to it behind it and a sheep is flexible. That's the difference. So if you like this video, it's a very short video of just 11 minutes. Oh yes, but we talked and I hope you've enjoyed it. Give us an old like and share the video. If you like Vikings and you want to see this channel become much larger and reach a, a much bigger audience. And I'll say goodbye as I show my shield off for the end screen. Goodbye. Viking shield. There you go.